Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. I need to tell you that I appreciate your faithfulness in coming so that we can be developed and trained and be our best for the congregations we lead. For those of us at the headquarters and everywhere, the Lord appreciates your interest in growing and developing for the good of his children. And as you bless God's people, the Lord will keep on blessing you. Amen. Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for your word. We're praying, Lord, that you open our eyes to see and to behold wondrous, wonderful things out of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, let this word do us good in our personal lives, in our ministries, in our families, in our evangelism, in the work of the Lord. Lord, let your work prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We give the glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're coming to a very common subject. But the Lord has some uncommon things to reveal to us. We have read Matthew chapter 14, some verses there. Mark chapter 8, some verses there. And Luke chapter 9, some verses there. We are going to pick some of the verses and we're going to look at what God is revealing today. Matthew chapter 14, verse 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Look at Mark chapter 8 from verse 1. In those days, the multitude been very great. And having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples unto him and saith unto them, look at verse 2, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat. Then in verse 3, and if I send them away fasting to their houses, they will faint by the way, for divers of them came from far. In Luke chapter 9, looking at verse 11, And the people, when they knew it, followed him. And he received them and spake unto them of the kingdom of God and healed them that had need of healing. We're looking at the subject today, the promised present healing for the whole man. For the whole man. The body needs healing. The soul needs healing. The spirit need, needs healing. Because if the spirit is down, it will affect the body. If the soul is sorrowful, it affects the body. But when the spirit, the soul are happy, then the body is healthy. That's why we need the healing, the touch of the Lord for the whole man. There are three things we're going to quickly look at. Number one, number one, we're looking at faith in his power for our healing. Number two, we're looking at food by his provision for our health. Let me say something here. Food is actually medicine. Food heals the body. And food can hurt the body. Food can strengthen the body. And food can strain the body. And so, food also ministers to our health point number two food by his provision for our health and number three faithfulness to the program of his health 
care. Not just that you get healed one day, one moment, at a point in time, but God has a health plan, health care. And when we key into that health care and we're faithful to that program, as He is faithful to the program, we remain healthy. You are going to remain healthy. Look at number one. Number one, faith in His power for our healing. Already we've read Matthew chapter 14 verse 14 as Jesus went forth and he saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick, all their sick without exception. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the promise of healing through Christ. When Christ has promised something, then you are able to come to him and get to him and say, do as you promised. Perform according to your promise, the promise of healing through Christ. Number two, the preaching before the healing of Christ. He went about, he will preach and teach and heal and most of the time he will preach the kingdom of God and then give them the value and the benefit of the kingdom in healing the preaching before the healing of Christ number three is the proclamation after healings and cures after he had healed them he'll not just leave them like that he'll make some proclamations to them for the preservation of the healing let's look at number one number one is the promise of healing through christ i say chapter 53 i'm reading from verse 4 it says surely he has borne our griefs I'm sure you understand that Isaiah was talking about 700 years before Christ came. He spoke as if it's done already. He was still to go to the cross, but he spoke as if he has come. He has ministered. He's gone to the cross. He's provided for our healing. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, smitten and stricken of God and afflicted. Verse 5 but he was wounded for our, trans, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. The evangelical teachers will tell us that part. With the stripes we are healed. It's not talking about bodily healing. They say it's talking about our salvation. That he gives us healing in our spirit. Let the scripture now interpret the scripture. In Matthew chapter 8, reading from verse 16. It says, when the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And healed all that were sick, physical natural normal healing their body and now verse 17 tells us that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Zias the prophet saying himself took our infirmities and bare our sicknesses that is the interpretation we need to make of Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 where it says by his stripes were healed refers to physical healing of the body acts chapter 10 reading from verse 38 it says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing healing is doing good christ interprets healing the sickness of the body as doing good healing all that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him healing all that were oppressed of the devil all the people jesus healed from day one of his ministry until the last day three and a half years 
all their sicknesses were from the devil and so nobody should say i am suffering because god gave me this sickness he gave me this plague he gave me this infirmity everyone that christ healed he heals them because all the afflictions were the works of the devil and he cancelled the works of the devil from their body like he will do for you tonight number two here number two is the preaching before the healing of christ he tells us in matthew chapter 4 reading from verse 17 it says from that time jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand why would he do that if he only healed their body and he didn't tell them or show them how to repent and did he, they didn't know the way to the kingdom of god that ministry will just be healing the body losing the soul but because he wanted the body to be active and healthy and alive and the soul to be saved because of that he preached to them repent for the kingdom of heaven is certain look at verse 23 in verse 23 it says and jesus went about all galilee he went about everywhere he went look at what he did first teaching in their synagogues first and preaching the gospel the good news the glad tidings of the kingdom next and then after that healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people did you understand that he didn't know of any incurable disease with christ with the name of christ there is no incurable disease he didn't know of any terminal disease with christ with the name of christ there is no terminal disease he didn't know about generational cause or disease that he could not touch that will not be present in the name in the in the teaching of christ healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among uh, the people look at mark chapter 6 verse 12 remember what we are talking about the preaching of first before the healing of christ in mark chapter 6 verse 12 and they went out and preached that men should repent they went out they didn't just you know they were not excited and interested in healing 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 yes healing will come but the people need to know the way into the kingdom of god and in verse 13 in verse 13 and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them acts chapter 14 reading from verse 7 acts 14 verse 7 and there they preached the gospel there they preached the gospel look at the next verse there in verse 8 and there sat a certain man at lystra impotent in his feet being a cripple in from his mother's womb who never at what then in verse 9 the same heard Paul speak the preaching first because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God that same man born lame heard Paul speak who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed then in verse 10 said with a loud voice stand upright on thy feet and he lived and he walked it will happen by going for this gck of this month august it will happen because I said so? No, because 
Christ Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Because his promise cannot fail. His power cannot fail. And the anointing that breaks the yoke cannot fail. It will happen to you. Yeah. Happen in your family. Yeah. Happen to the invitees and the members you bring in Jesus' name. Yeah. Let's look at number three. Number three here is proclamation after healings, plural, chaos, plural, after he had healed them, he made proclamation to them. We're looking at John chapter 5, verse 14. In John chapter 5, verse 14, afterward, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. But there's still something you need to observe. You're healed, you're cured, you're recovered, and the power of the Lord has taken that infirmity away from you. Look at this now. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. Let's look at Luke chapter 10, reading from verse 17. In Luke chapter 10, verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy. Somebody say joy. Joy in your heart. As a minister, you are going to be ministering in the power of the Lord. You will have testimony to share about your ministry. And, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Verse 18, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Verse 19, behold, I give unto you power. What do you have? What are you carrying? And as we go to the crusade and you see all those people, even as we are praying, you and I will be walking together. Amen. Let me hear your amen. amen. Because we're going to share the reward together. Amen. It'll reward you amen. as it rewards me. Amen. Why? Because what we say we're going to pray for the sick now you're standing by that sick person and you're encouraging him if you need to lay hands on him if you need to touch him if you need to gently lift him up if he's lame and then i speak and you confirm it and you assure the people i'm telling you if you and i two of us shall agree together as touching anything that we ask it will be done you will be a miracle worker. He says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. But look at verse 20 now. In verse 20, it says, Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you. But rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. After the healing, after the recovery, after the cure, he still gives us message and he says we shouldn't forget heaven. And we shouldn't forget the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. He doesn't want us to be carried away with only healing the body. He wants us to remember our name must remain in the book of life. Your name will remain in the book of life. Look at point number two. Point number two, food by his provision for our health food by his provision for our health matthew chapter 15 we're looking at verse 32 in matthew chapter 15 verse 32 here jesus said then jesus called his disciples unto him and said 
I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. Now, can you see the compassion of Christ? Christ Himself had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And He went through that. And these people had been with Him only three days. He didn't say, three days that's not a big deal i did that for 40 days so if i fasted for 40 days and they have only been with us for three days no problem let them go back home and then find something to eat we should have the compassion of christ we shouldn't overlabor the people and pressurize the people and say i've consecrated that I've yielded that. I have gone farther than that. If I have gone for 40 days, 3 days, 5 days, 7 days, no problem. Keep them there. No, Christ had compassion on them. I pray God will help us to be considerate about people, the people we're leading, and the people we interact with in Jesus' name. In verse 36, in verse 36, we're told, and he took the seven loaves and the fishes, and he gave thanks and break them and gave to his disciples, and his disciples gave to the multitude we're looking at acts chapter 20 27 reading from verse 33 acts chapter 27 reading from verse 33 and while the day was coming on paul besought them all to take meat to take food saying this day is the 14th day that ye have tarried and continued fasting and having taken nothing well that verse tells us what fasting is fasting is taking no food eating no food and these people it was imposed on them because of the danger on the sea but look at what the apostle said in verse 34 in verse 34 wherefore i pray you to take some meat for this is for your health take some food for this is for your for your health sometimes when we're bereaved somebody has died we go without food not because we want to fast the sorrow the bereavement makes us not to even have appetite and we must be very careful lest while we're like that we injure our health take some meat for this is for your health for there shall not an air fall from the head of any of you we're looking at three things here number one foods plural kinds of food different kinds of food foods that heal and strengthen our body number two feeding that hurts and sickens the body makes the body sick number three fasting without harm or strain on the body look at number one there foods that heal and strengthen our body already we have read in matthew chapter 14 how jesus said i have compassion on them give them to each and they give them food so that they'll be strengthened so that they'll be alive so that they will have energy and they'll be able to move on look at first samuel chapter 30 verse 9 first samuel chapter 30 verse 9 so david went and he and the 600 men that were with him and came to the brook Bissom. 
where those that were left behind stayed. Then in verse 10, but David pursued he and the 400 men for two for 200 abode behind which were so faint that they could no they could not go over the brook Bezo. and then in verse 11 and he found an egyptian in the field and brought him to david and gave him bread look at that they didn't pray for him they didn't lay hands on him they didn't cast out anything they gave him bread and he did eat and they made him drink water they gave him bread and they made him drink water water is very important actually our body is made of a lot of water a lot of water and the brain the brain is a lot of water apart from all the tissue and all the muscles and everything we see there it's a lot of water our body and because of that body the body needs essential drink not uh, you know drinking sugary things and all that our body needs water so they gave him something to eat and they gave him water to drink and then in verse 12 we're told and they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins we're talking about vegetable as well as fruits you see they gave him food they gave him fruit they gave him vegetable and they gave him water to drink there are people that would they eat carbohydrate and they're filled up until they are dozing until their body is weak and tired and if somebody has a, what they call diabetes and then is eating there's no protein there's no plant there's no vegetable and there is no fruit only carbohydrate carbohydrate and he says i don't understand uh, i'm getting weaker and then my body is the food we eat we need to balance up everything it says for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water three days and three nights and then in verse 13 in verse 13 and david said unto him to whom belongest thou and whence art thou and he said i am a young man of egypt servant to an amalekite and my master left me because three days are gone i fell sick but do you know this man was not uh, healed because of prayer he was not healed because of any motivational talk they just gave him the right food and when we eat the right food it acts like medicine and the time we eat very important let's say for example now you're going to sleep at 11 p.m and then you eat real carbohydrate and you're filled up by 10 30 that's too close to the time you're going to eat so the food we eat and the time we eat at the timing that we eat if it's on and on and on and then we take breakfast and then snacks and this and that and we fill our body with sugar all the time and when you want to drink you look for a sugary drink i like it because it's so sweet that sweet thing will harm your body i pray god will grant us wisdom we're coming to uh, number two here now number two feeding that hurts and seeking the body we're looking at second kings chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 38 it says and elisha came again to gilgah and there was a deer in the land and the sons of the prophets were sitting before him and he said unto the unto his servant set on the great porch and seize pottage 
for the sons of the prophets in verse 39 and when and, and one went out into the field to gather herbs to gather vegetable to gather the fruits and to gather the tuber that they were going to cook and it says and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gods a slab full and came up and stretched them into the porch of pottage for they knew them not they knew them not they didn't know what is edible they didn't know what will do the good what will do the body any good when we eat you know yourself and you know um, your situation you know everybody might say you know i take that it doesn't bother me know yourself and when you know yourself and you know what you are eating you will know what you are putting into your body so that you are not digging your grave with your teeth you are not planning you want to live long and yet you are eating food that weakens you and sickens you and makes you sick we must look at that any peculiar problem you have you know sometimes you are taking uh, maybe medicine the doctor has given you medicine which is good but the medicine may work for some time supplement may work for some time then at a point it will reach a plateau that the thing doesn't have any effect anymore you're just taking that thing and then you're eating junk you're eating what is not good for your body even though you are taking that uh, supplement the supplement is not working uh, anymore he said in the last part of that verse and they knew them not look at verse 40 in verse 40 so they poured out to the men to eat and it came to pass as they were eating of the pottage that they cried out and said O thou man of God there is death in the pot there is death in the pot when you eat food that is not compatible with your progress with your strength with your hell and what you are eating is not nourishing you it's actually making you to decline in health there is death in the porch and they could not eat thereof but then the man of God prayed and everything changed in your life in your family everything will change in Jesus name we're coming to number three here number three fasting without harm or strain on the body Christ Jesus said look at Mark now chapter 8 reading from verse 1 in those days the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat Jesus called his disciples unto him and says unto them verse 2 in verse 2 I have compassion on the multitude because they have now been with me three days and have nothing to eat look at verse 3 in verse 3 and if I send them away fasting if I send them away fasting there is fasting by choice there is fasting that is imposed on us let's say for example now because of the economy people who want to eat three times they cannot they cannot even eat two times and they eat only once a day 
that's a kind of fasting but it's not by choice in this case their fasting was not by choice they were in the meeting for those three days and food was not provided and they had nothing many of them had nothing to eat that's fasting but there is deliberate fasting when the spirit of god leads you or the need of your life needs you and you say i must fast you do it intelligently and you do it purposefully and you do it prayerfully and you do it knowing that you have a request and this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting that's deliberate but then in that deliberate fast you're very careful if you're going to go beyond three days you must take water the body can deal without food for a longer time than it can do without water we're looking at matthew chapter 17 reading from verse 19 then came the disciples to jesus apart and said why could not we cast him out then in verse 20 it says and jesus said unto them because of your unbelief let me illustrate that for you let's say for example now you have a line and from zero to one to two to three to ten and your faith goes from zero to three but the three to ten is full of unbelief that's why the man said in mark chapter 9 he says lord i believe help thou mine unbelief unbelief mixed with his faith and his faith from zero to three or four and then the rest of the line unbelief has taken over when you fast the fasting actually increases the faith and decreases the unbelief and then as you shrink the unbelief and you expand extend the faith your faith becomes greater because actually if thou canst believe all things are possible but some of the uh, unbelief is um, is a kind of a pressing on the faith let me illustrate that to you a woman is pregnant the baby is there but then that same woman that is pregnant also has fibroid and the fibroid is growing and the baby is trying to grow and the baby and the fibroid they are in the same place and the more the fibroid goes grows the more the baby is uh, pressed and eventually it may endanger the life of that baby what fasting does is to remove the unbelief like the fibroid that is pressing on the baby and then your baby faith will come alive and your baby faith will grow in jesus name jesus said it is because of your unbelief if ye have a faith as a grain of mustard seed and there is no shadow of unbelief there ye shall say unto this mountain remove hence for hence to yonder place and it shall remove your faith will clear that mountain out of your life out of your body out of your environment in jesus name you will say to this mountain remove hands to yonder place and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible unto you nothing shall be impossible unto me look at verse 21 how be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer 
and fasting. There is prayer of faith. There is prayer and fasting. When unbelief is pressing on your faith, decreasing your faith, and making your faith of non effect, fasting will reduce that unbelief. Your faith will be bright and pierce through. Every mountain will go from your life. We're coming to point number three now. In point number three, faithfulness to the program of his health care. Health care. Now, this is talking about remaining healthy and remaining strong. Not that, not that you're sick, you're healed, you're sick, you're healed, you're up. You are down, you are on the mountain top, you are in the bottom of the valley. No straight line that moves gradually in the slope. And there is no up and down. The health care of the Lord. Faithfulness to the health program, the program of his health care. We are looking at three things here. We are looking at number one, happiness promotes healthfulness happiness promotes healthfulness number two haughtiness pre prevents healthiness and number three holiness preserves healing and health look at number one number one happiness promotes healthfulness look at proverbs chapter 17 reading from verse 22 a merry heart doeth good like medicine. A merry heart doeth good like medicine. But a broken spirit dries the bones. When you carry on a sad lie, a sorrowful lie, a sinking feeling, a depressed attitude and you interpret everything that happens around you as against you nobody loves me everybody is after me that attitude of depression and sadness will be making your health to go down now if you look at a pipe through one side, water is coming in. And through the other opening, water is going out. There will never be full water there available for you to use. Because as water comes in, water also comes out. What I mean is this, that you are getting medicine. And you are using the medicine that should make your body to be strong and make you healthy. On the other hand, you are depressed, you are sorrowful, you are sad, everything is negative. As health is coming in through the medicine you are using regularly, health is going out through the sadness and the sorrow and the depression you give yourself. But if you can block this area where the water is going out and you have a merry heart, a joyful heart, a happy outlook. And then whatever happens, you interpret like Joseph and say, that does not matter. I will get to where I will get to. I'm talking about you there. I said that doesn't matter. I said that doesn't matter. I said that doesn't matter. <laughs> Look at me now. You will get where you will get you. Yeah. And so when you have a happy outlook and you know God is in control, God is in charge, that thing, that thing will not stop my journey. A merry heart does good like medicine. And people will see you and say, what's happening to you? No problem, no mountain, and uh, nothing to worry about. You're always happy, and you're always on top. You say, in the grace of God. That grace of God will carry you through. 
medicine, medicine, medicine. He merely had happy outlook. Look at, um, look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, 33. I'm reading from verse 25. Thy shoes shall be iron and brass. As thy day, so shall thy strength be. Amen. You know, when you have the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord will be your strength in Jesus' name. Look at verse 27. In verse 27, the eternal God is thy refuge. Underneath thee at the everlasting arms. And ye shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, it says, Happy art thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, a people saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help, who is the sword of thy excellency and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee your enemies will say your son die they'll be found as liars he will be defeated they'll be found as liars you are all always thinking about the promise of god you are not ever thinking about the pronouncement of your enemies those enemies will be found liars in jesus name and then it says and thou shalt tread upon the high places we're coming to number two number two haughtiness prevents healthiness you know if somebody is always in the fighting mode fighting fighting and he's shadow boxing uh, every time and he's practicing fighting uh, every time he feels that life is all of conflict no celebration no feasting no joy no happiness even the good things god has given him uh, he doesn't have time to enjoy them he doesn't enjoy his family he's always looking for something uh, to complain about and if you say my brother do you think that this kind of life is a peaceful life is a healthy life is a good life say, no 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 don't talk like that i need to defend myself what are you defending yourself about Everybody is an enemy, and then he is not taken to correction. He's so haughty and he's so proud. You will not be like that. I will not be like that. We're looking at Daniel chapter 4, and I'm reading from Vastachi. The king spake and said, It's not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by my might by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty that's haughtiness that's pride and then in verse 31 while the word was in the king's mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying O king Nebuchadnezzar to thee it is spoken the kingdom is departed from thee. It was his pride that brought him to that. We are saved by the grace of God. I said you are saved. We are sanctified by the grace of God. That heart and the pride of Nebuchadnezzar, of Herod, of Pharaoh will not be in our heart. Look at verse 37. In verse 37, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the God of heaven. All whose works are truth, ways, judgment, and those that walk in pride is able to abase you will not be abased we come to number three now number three holiness preserves healing and health we're looking at john chapter 5 
verse 14 in john chapter 5 verse 14 afterward jesus findeth him in the temple the man had been healed he had been every which made whole he didn't say 38 years i miss the good company 38 years i miss the dancing hall 38 years i miss the night club and after the healing then rush there and then begin to waste his health but he went to the temple as the lord heals us then we make a priority the place of fellowship the place of reading the word the place of hearing the interpretation of the word jesus findeth him in the temple and said thou art made whole are you made whole and the hand of Christ touched you and the promise of Christ for you what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary by his stripes I am healed is it for you you are made whole from the top of your head to the tip of your toe you are made whole healthy strong your eyesight bright your amen is confirmed behold thou art made whole sin no more lest a worse thing come on thee you know what jesus was saying sickness is not the will of the heavenly father sickness comes because of our wrong negative thoughts our wrong negative life our wrong negative attitude our wrong negative eating our wrong negative drinking sickness we actually bring sickness upon ourselves it says man 38 years of opportunity of strength of healing is of a health is gone now anything you are going to do put the 38 years of suffering and sickness on one side and put this other action on the other side if this action will bring back the sickness of 38 years you're a wise man you'll say no never never will i allow anything again that will bring 38 years of suffering or even a more tormenting sickness in my life i will not do anything again that will separate me from god and satan will have a foothold in my life and then he grabs me again you'll be a wise man i will be a wise man you'll be a wise woman a wise sister in jesus name actually holiness is for our benefit holiness is not oh, because i'm in deeper life holiness is because i'm a preacher in deeper life holiness because if i did that and people discover they'll say ah, it's a hypocrite that's not the reason you're holy you are holy so that a worse thing will not come in your life satan will not take hold of that thing and pull you off from today you'll be holy you'll be happy you'll be healthy you'll be lifted up the grace of god will abide in your life the lord cannot tell the man sin no more if he didn't give him the grace it's not a taskmaster if he told him sin no more it means that grace is available and for every one of us tonight grace is available for a happy life for a holy life for a healthy life and none of these diseases 
will come upon your life anymore. Free. Where are you? Rise up and tell the Lord. The Lord has spoken to us today. And the Lord has revealed to us how we remain in the proper way. In the proper direction. So that the health program of God will work positively in your life. Please open your mouth. Talk to the Lord.